and now on BBC Two in a change to the published programme, instead of the snooker from Preston Town Hall, we take a sideways look at the news. Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Victoria Corrin Mitchell. In the news this week, in Plymouth, a pensioner regrets trying on a virtual reality headset showing what life will be like under the Tory social care policy. Leeds, one conference delegate from London suddenly can't remember if he'd watered the strawberries on his allotment that morning. <laughs> and a field trip for the Shanghai Film School ends in disaster for the silent comedy department. On Ian's team tonight is a political commentator who is one of the first names on the list when any election show is looking for guests. Well, that's the alphabet for you. Please welcome <laughs> Adam Bolton. <laughs> and with Paul tonight is a TV personality and vicar who once said broadcasting was just showing off, or as the Greeks call it, epidikneomai. Please welcome <laughs> the Reverend Richard Coles. And we start with the bigger stories of the week. Ian and Adam, take a look at this. That's the viewer. <laughs> <laughs> For all of the shows, here she comes. He's leaving the studio before the debate starts. That's <laughs> he's giving jam free to all voters. <laughs> That's her <laughs> saying, no, <laughs> I won't be coming. She was meant to be here tonight, but she just... <laughs> <laughs> ..didn't want to mix it with ghastly hacks, so uh, we've got Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> This is um, these debates which you've all been watching. Mm. <laughs> of course, Jeremy Corbyn managed to crash the party. He decided at the last minute they had nothing to lose, so he might as well turn up. Do you think that's what he did? He suddenly thought, I'm OK at television after all. Yeah. <laughs> I went up against Paxman, I didn't die. Exactly. <laughs> Why not just go and do another debate? No, precisely. Although we call them debates, there is no debate with Theresa May. No. Because she's she not there. Turn up. She said Amber Rudd instead. Amber Rudd did rather well, didn't she? She got a big laugh. Do you know what she got a big laugh for, Amber Rudd, on the debate? People will judge us on our record. Hilarious for gales of laughter, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a look? Yeah. In your manifesto, there was a notable absence of costings. Well, I would say, in answer to that question, judge us on our record. On our record, we have <laughs> cut... <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. <laughs> we have <laughs> cut <laughs> the <laughs> deficit. <laughs> She had a little smile. She could see it was funny herself, couldn't she? <laughs> she had a little smile going, oh, yeah, I know, a bit cheeky. It's extraordinary. It's neck and neck. By the time this comes out, it may be, uh, I think, Corbyn's ahead. Yep. Isn't well, that right, Adam? No, I, I can't tell you. We've been doing the election rehearsals, so... Oh, right. We know the result, but we can't... Put <laughs> <laughs> what did Tim Farron have to say at the end of the debate? He had a lot of gags, Tim he, Farron. Did he? He, yeah. he did say... If Mrs May can't spare the time for you, you shouldn't spare the time for her. Shall we have a look? The Prime Minister is not here tonight. She can't be bothered, so why should you? In fact, Bake Off is on BBC Two next. Why not make yourself... <laughs> why not make yourself a brew? You are not worth Theresa May's time. Don't give her yours. Right, he's thinking about his next job. <laughs> So now I'm worried about the applause. Do we have a very biased BBC audience, do you think? <laughs> it would be an outrage if we don't. <laughs> 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 
I'm already worried that I've made too many jokes about Theresa May and not enough about Jeremy Corbyn. Mind you, you say a bad thing about Jeremy Corbyn, you get enough shit on the internet if you're not Jewish, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll leave it. Um, they, did, they did both take part on Channel 4's The Battle for Number 10, didn't they? What yes. did Jeremy Corbyn have to say in that uh, interview? Well, I think he said, why isn't Adam interviewing me? It was Sky, yeah. wasn't it? No. And Channel oh, 4. Channel 4. That was our thing, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's bad enough if the public aren't following you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, journalists, I'm bothered. No, but we did it with Channel 4 and it, it sort of seemed on. What, what was the question? Well, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> this is turning into a Corbyn impersonation. <laughs> what Jeremy Corbyn said in the interview, but it might be quite difficult to remember. Uh, I... Shall we have a look at why? Yeah. I'm horrified yeah, at the very idea... To... The very uh, horrified at the very idea of a you nuclear attack... You promised to renew a nuclear weapon. What I want to see... I'm asking you... What I want to see... Do you think it's morally What right? I want to see... A lot of manufacturing industry... Haven't that you relies... done any sums? C can I finish, please? <laughs> really? Just for a second? No, I'm asking no, you for I'm a figure. No, I'm trying to... But this manifesto you fundamentally... You persuade the Cabinet... Can I, can the I, shadow can Cabinet... Can I finish this? No. <laughs> I'll um, say no. <laughs> Did you enjoy that, uh, that interviewing technique as a viewer? <laughs> <laughs> um, not really, no. I, I, I believe you want to inform the public in interviews. And I don't think we learnt an awful lot from that interview. Do you think there were other, you know, senior broadcasting journalists who could have done it better? <laughs> <laughs> and how did the audience show their approval of Theresa May at the end? They let her live. <laughs> <laughs> it was just such a tiny little, not quite a Mexican way, it was like a sort of Mexican gesture, wasn't uh, it? <laughs> was Mexican gesture? Yeah, people stood yeah. up and sort of went like that. Yeah. Mexican <laughs> gesture? <laughs> Did you not have a one-man standing ovation? Would you like to see it? Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Theresa May, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, the Scottish Labour leader, Kezia Dugdale, was given quite an unusual introduction by Sky News's Sophie Ridge. Do you know what that was? Again, Adam, your channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was asleep at the time. <laughs> You and the audience. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Let's have a look. Hello again. We're live from the Glasgow Science Centre, talking to all the party leaders north of the border. And joining us in our studio now is the leader of Scottish Labour... Labour, sorry. <laughs> 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 I think that's magnificent. More labia leaders. That's what we need. <laughs> that's what we need in public life. You would never make such a mistake, would you, Adam? <laughs> <laughs> should, we, should we watch you trying to read a front page headline of a newspaper? Yeah, sure. Yeah. On the USA Today money page, at the top there, Wall Street rally ups Brexit like erection, uh, election <laughs> risk. <laughs> <laughs> So you'll be, you'll be wanting a hard Brexit, will you? Yeah, I, <laughs> I never knew I'd done that. One track nine, yeah. No wonder they keep you behind a desk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm afraid we don't have a clip this week of Diane Abbott getting figures wrong, but uh, we have got Jeremy Corbyn on Women's Hour. Ah, yeah. Just not getting the figures at all. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. How much will it cost to provide unmeans tested childcare for 1.3 million children? Um, it will cost. Um, it will obviously cost a lot to do so. <laughs> I presume you have the figures. Yes, I do. So, so how much will it cost? I'll give you the figure in a moment. You don't know it. Um, what you're, I want you're logging into your iPad here. That's <laughs> a major policy, and you don't know how much it will cost. Can I give you the exact figure in a moment? It, you're holding a manifesto, you're flicking through it, you've got an iPad there, you've had a phone call while we're in here, and you, you, you don't know how much it's going to cost. Can we come back to that in a moment? <laughs> Anyone can lose the bit of paper. I mean, it's, if you're a vicar, everyone always expects you to be able to be, quote, chapter and verse from the Bible, but you don't hold the information in that way. So it's thou shalt not commit adultery, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny detail. The Gospel according to Shrek, I don't know. 
No, he was announcing the childcare plans. Yeah, it was a big one. I mean, it, it was that issue. So there were two things to remember, how many children and how much it cost. It was poor. I mean, it's difficult to spin it any other way. I've just heard that Theresa May is now pulled out of doing Woman's Hour herself. She's been replaced by Justine Greening. What do you think of that? Do you know that's in the same studio as Saturday Live? So I'll be detecting the signs aura. of nervousness on the seats when they go in. That's really disgusting. It's another edition of I didn't know a vicar would say that. <laughs> Do you usually sniff the seats? Oh. <laughs> enough, that's enough. <laughs> this is the exciting news that the election campaign is nearly over. Theresa May warned that when it came to the EU, Jeremy Corbyn could find himself alone and naked in the negotiating <laughs> chamber, something only achieved once before by a rat ass Nigel Farage. <laughs> During her interview with Jeremy Paxman, Theresa May insisted that what's needed to negotiate a successful Brexit is a bloody difficult woman. <laughs> Luckily, that's exactly what Germany has got. <laughs> <laughs> After Theresa May missed the debate, the Mirror referred to the absent Prime Minister as Chicken Theresa May. You can order Chicken Theresa May in a restaurant near me. <laughs> it's thin-skinned, boneless and refuses to be grilled. <laughs> Paul and Richard, take a look at this. Yes. Ah, yes, this is... Uh... <laughs> Here he is, the bozo of the Western world. That's what his hair does at night when he goes to bed. <laughs> in that shape. Uh, this is... Oh, yes, he tweeted a word. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a very it. incompetent logo for the Church of England. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yes, this is Donald Trump, and he's going to be sort of... Uh, because we're recording on Thursday night, round about now, he's going to be announcing whether America are going to pull out of the, uh, you know, the climate change agreement and stuff. So that's basically what it's about, climate change. And executed with his traditional sleek statesmanship as yeah. he greeted the Prime Minister of Montenegro, I think it was, with a yeah. friendly shove. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you support if, if somebody... Let me... Um, is it right to hit him? <laughs> Once, in the face. <laughs> Just once. I might strongly advise him of the wisdom of turning the other cheek, <laughs> if he'd like to try it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> and the, well, I don't know, it's, and it's the climate change, isn't it? I mean, it's the Paris Accord of 2015, the whole world, or nearly the whole world, signed up to it, and then Donald Trump thinks he's going to make America great again by making sure everybody ends up with a tan just like his. <laughs> but not out of a bottle, Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another lightning. edition of Who Would Have Thought no, Priest Would Have yes. Said That? <laughs> I don't mean to be ungallant, but no, Victoria yeah. did reveal to us that she had splodged on. Slapped it on straight out of a bottle. As a tribute to Donald. <laughs> <laughs> She's not going to rise to this. I know. That's She's going to try. turn the other lightly bronze cheek. <laughs> <laughs> Orange on TV now. If you come on a normal colour, people think you're ill. Exactly. <laughs> so this was the early hours of Wednesday morning. He tweeted, despite the constant negative press kerfuffle, <laughs> and left it at that. Do you think he was trying to spell kerfuffle? No, coverage. 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 Well, coverage. This, is, this is what somebody said on Twitter. They made a sort of dictionary entry where they wrote top definition kerfuffle when you want to say coverage, but your hands are too small to hit all that. <laughs> <laughs> He sent out Sean Spicer, who is yeah. his spokesman, who is saying, uh, people who need to know know what that means. <laughs> did you see what the Eurostar did? They actually put up a sign on the main Eurostar, officially, it looked like this. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the climate change agreement. There could be another reason why Trump pulled out of the Paris deal. Why is he annoyed with Europe particularly at the moment? NATO payments? Something to do with that? That's what he says it That's is. That's what he says it is, but it's not. Well, the Scandinavians is it made Macron's fun of him. handshake? Oh, they, they, they copied the orb. <laughs> yes, let's have a look at a picture. These are the five leaders of <laughs> Finland, Norway, Denmark, Sweden and Iceland. Literally the leaders of those countries. World leaders are ganging up to <laughs> make a piss about the American president. Brilliant. 
Yeah, there was you... a nice little subway. When are you going to punch him? <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned earlier, Ian, what did Macron do to try and uh, beat Trump in the public eye? Oh, well, Trump does this thing of, of, of grabbing people's hands, other world leaders, really hard and, you know, giving them a bit of a shock. And Macron's been in the gym for years. <laughs> <laughs> so he literally said, I'm going to get him. So when he got his hand, Macron went... <laughs> <laughs> And he wouldn't let it go. And Trump was... <laughs> <laughs> no, he was completely crushed. It occurred to me that Donald Trump is famous for grabbing things that aren't just hands. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying, to be, trying to kind of just... Yeah, thank you. According to CNN, how did Trump sum up his first foreign trip? Where the fuck am I? <laughs> <laughs> According to CNN, President Trump thought the trip was too long, returned lonely, angry, and he's gained weight. <laughs> Nigel Farage recently become? <laughs> <laughs> Pleasingly obsolete? <laughs> this audience is so biased. So biased. <laughs> He's become a person of interest in oh. the FBI. I know, it's not difficult to imagine. Um, <laughs> in the FBI inquiry? It's exactly right. It's, it's they're it... worried that Farage <laughs> was a bearer of discreet secrets to the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> I have another one of them. <laughs> you got to know America and Trump land pretty well, didn't you? I mm -hmm. you travelled in America. Shall we see you getting to know the American voters on election night last year? Uh, why not? Well, let's see you. <laughs> Cheers, to Cheers to you. Cheers to you. Splendid. Uh, and do join me for... Right our special programme tomorrow night, that's at midnight. I'll be speaking, amongst others, to Bernie Sanders. And, of course, full coverage of the, of the inauguration on Friday. This is Donald Trump's rejection of the Paris Climate Change Agreement. Also this week, Trump attacked the Germans over trade. The Germans are bad, really bad. Look at the millions of cars they sell in the US. He's happy to import some expensive European models, but only as wives. <laughs> <laughs> Round two now, and we couldn't really be bothered to think of anything original, so, Richard, we've just copied your big painting challenge. <laughs> Welcome oh. to the big news painting challenge. Oh, this sounds exciting. What news story is being painted? Oh. Fingers on buzzers, teams. Yeah. Paul mm. <laughs> and Richard? Well, I sort of have to declare an interest here. But this is the interesting the invention of a, of a robot priest in Germany. Um, quite how effective as a dispenser of sacraments remains to be seen. Well, shall we have a look at the priest in action? Yeah. <laughs> What name do you think they've given this robot priest? Zirvata. It's called Bless You Too. <laughs> According to a German newspaper, it can give 31 blessings in seven languages and it asks if you want to be blessed in a male or female voice. Do you feel threatened, Richard? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have to say it's a rather more efficient job than some of the clergy of my acquaintance, but uh, no. <laughs> Actually, I think canon law, you can't... Robots aren't allowed. I think when it comes to dispensing of sacraments, you have to be at least a human. <laughs> <laughs> In the Church of England, now you can be a woman, too. Yeah. <laughs> this is the robot priest which gives out automatic blessings. It's rumoured that the Anglican Church in the UK is working on a similar model called C of E3PO. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. <laughs> Paul and Richard. Now, this may be a, a, a tribute to the late, great John Noakes. There he is. That's the, the footage yeah. they showed earlier this week. I remember seeing it at the time when I was at school, when he's climbing up Nelson's column long before health and safety, where essentially... He's climbing up a ladder that's tied to Nelson. It was incredible bravery, wasn't it? At this level, the plinth on which Nelson stands overhangs the column. 
I found myself literally hanging from the ladder with nothing at all beneath me. You told me there was overhang, but you didn't tell me it lent to one side. No, Did you? that was the awkward part. Oh. <laughs> There's a cameraman up there yeah, with him as well, with a great big camera, and maybe even a sound guy. I mean, it's... They've all climbed up. Yes. There was a sound guy, but unfortunately... Yeah. The sound engineer didn't record sound the first time he went up. He had to do it again. Oh, my God. <laughs> what happened when John Noakes and a few other Blue Peter presenters opened a time capsule? <laughs> <laughs> this was one of the landmark experiences of my life when I was a child. <laughs> Seriously, so yeah. who moves it? 1971. Yeah. Forget the call to the priesthood. <laughs> <laughs> Forget that moment of divine revelation. <laughs> It's why I do this now. <laughs> they buried a time capsule, and I said, the most exciting thing ever. Mm. And I realised in the year 2000, when they dug it up and they opened it, and they just turned it up, and this kind of brown sludge just <laughs> poured out. <laughs> and I don't know, it was not, not a good reveal. It had all got wet, hadn't it? <laughs> Last brilliant John Noakes story. What happened when he'd had a bobsleigh accident and he wanted to show the bruises on camera. He showed his underpants or something. Sort of. John yeah, Noakes himself night told night the story <laughs> that when he took off his trousers to show the bruises, he noticed that he was wearing his wife's black lace knickers <laughs> that he'd put on by accident in the dark that morning. Oh, <laughs> How easy that is to do. This is the passing of one of the nation's favourite TV presenters, the great John Noakes. Get Down Shep became one of Blue Peter's most famous catchphrases, along with Here's One I Made Earlier and One of Our Presenters, Richard, Has Done a Very <laughs> Naughty Thing. <laughs> Time now for the odd one out rounds. Just one between you this week. Your four are Prince Harry, Tybalt, a dishwasher and Charles Darwin. It's an exam question. Uh, Tybalt was wrongly identified as a, a member of the Montague household in a GCSE English exam. Ah, yes. Whereas, in fact, he was a Capulet. Yes. And, and these poor students were asked why did Tybalt hate the Capulets, which he didn't, because they were his own family. And what's right. the odd one out? Dishwashers. <laughs> 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 it's recently been revealed that dishwashers are very good at uh, washing... Um... Dishes? No, no, no. <laughs> The answer is... The dishwashers were also on an exam paper. And so was Darwin. This is all in the last month. There was a geography paper which asked students about dishwashers and they said they'd been preparing for things like climate change and similarly, I think it was a biology paper, and the question was... Why had he been drawn, drawn like, like a, a monkey, monkey in, yeah. a, in a cartoon? And they thought... Because the reason why he was drawn like a monkey was because he had written uh, the... Evol you know, the... Well, the, origin, the, the, origin the origin of the species. Of the species. Of the species. And, uh, Never catch on. And then... <laughs> yeah. 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 And then... Prince Harry is the odd one out. Why? Because they were using his voice in Germany for an English oral exam and they decided he didn't speak the Queen's English. <laughs> <laughs> he was dropped from the German oral exam. They were. That's you... right. They all were... Uh, yeah. <laughs> They've all been the subject of controversial exam questions. Apart from Prince Harry, mm. one of whose speeches featured in an exam question, but nobody could understand it. What was wrong with Harry's speech? Well, I suppose if it was for Germans, if you're going, OK, ja, it's not a translation, is it? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not that. The, the problem with Harry's speech is that he muttered and mumbled so much that thousands of students literally couldn't understand a word of it. The geography students, as you say, were, were cross because they were asked a question about dishwashers. They weren't expecting it. Do you know what the question was? Water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a tough question. Yeah. Water it, it question. Was, no, it was, it was something like, more people are using dishwashers, why is more water being used? Yeah. And what percentage of the UK population owned dishwashers in 2001? Uh, oh, it's on my laptop. It's in um, <laughs> 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 Twenty-seven percent of the UK population owned dishwashers in 2001 and 40% in 2010 outline why the demand for water is likely to increase in the future. And, uh, yes, in the GCSE biology exam, students were shown this drawing of uh, Charles Darwin as a monkey and they didn't really understand why. One student tweeted, So does anyone actually know why Charles Darwin was drawn as a monkey? I thought he wrote a Christmas carol until today. <laughs> 
Tybalt, as you say, the question paper asked, why did he hate the Capulets? And he didn't, mm. he was a Capulet. As Shakespeare himself said, ignorance is the curse of God. Or, as the exam <laughs> board put it, we are urgently investigating how this got through our assurance process. <laughs> Another criticism of the GCSE English exam was that it focused less on Romeo and Juliet and more on the characters Gregory and Samson. One student had no problem with that question, tweeting, I'm quite happy the paper was on Samson and Gregory because last night I only read the first bit of the book, then fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features, as its guest publication, Oil Installer, the magazine of the heating industry. That looks like my local priest. <laughs> <laughs> And we start with, I look forward to the arrival of Oil Installer magazine, but what? I must get out more instead. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone gets this, I'll give you £100 of my own money. OK, Ooh. right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to the arrival of Oil Pickles. Installer magazine, but I wish you had more colour photographs to indicate the wide range in aspects of our industry. The opposite. I look forward I give to you £100. It's, it's gone too <laughs> The answer is, I look forward to the arrival of Oil Installer magazine, but we are a niche specialist magazine and we should keep it that way. Next, what, missing for more than a century, rediscovered by scientists? Theresa May. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is, yeah. faceless fish, missing yeah. for more than a century, rediscovered by scientists. This is the faceless fish that was spotted this week for the first time in Australia since 1873. According to the scientist who found the fish, you can't see any eyes, any gills or any mouth. I think what you found there, mate, is a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Next, what? No longer a dirty word. Fuck it. Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> dirty. <laughs> oil. Um... Oil, no longer a dirty word. According to oil installer, oil is no longer a dirty word. Well, that depends on your point of view. For some, oil is refined. For others, it's crude. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, big birds are more likely to what? Fly short distances. Cluck longer. <laughs> <laughs> big birds are more likely to be faithful. Scientists revealed this week that birds with small brains are associated with promiscuity, with females being the guiltiest of all. According to the research, the albatross was the most faithful bird, followed by the guillemot, while the common shag was what they called the sparrow who lived opposite. <laughs> So the final scores are Ian and Adam with six, Paul and Richard with seven. Oh. Oh. Well it's just weird. Yeah, yeah. Just weird. And I leave you with news that in Brussels, as world leaders gather for a photo opportunity, Theresa May insists that the UK and United States still have a special relationship. <laughs> <laughs> In central London, there's the unusual sight of a Lib Dem celebrating victory. <laughs> <laughs> on the campaign trail, one man's attempt to convince the electorate that he is strong on defence doesn't go as planned. <laughs> <laughs> and following her failure to win the French presidency, Marine Le Pen's head of security assures her that her campaign manager has been dealt with. <laughs> Good night. The BBC Asian Network brings its Asian Network comedy show to Leeds West Yorkshire Playhouse, hosting some of the biggest UK stand-up comedians and hottest new talent. On the red button now. <laughs>